How's it going everyone? My name is Giovanni and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a little bit different of a video. As you can see behind me, I have a 1972 Ford F100. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be seeing if we can get this thing running and driving. So those of you that know me know that uh, I'm mostly a Chevy guy. In other circumstances, this truck I probably would never work on. I'm just not a huge fan of Fords. I don't know too much about them. But this particular truck is a little bit special. This truck is actually my fiance, Ali's dad's truck, Pedro. And Pedro is a really good guy. He's always there to do whatever I need help with. They're actually on vacation right now. So the plan is hopefully get this thing running, get it parked in his garage for him. So he has a nice little surprise when he gets back. I'm not sure when the last time this thing ran was. Probably been about 10 years, I would say, but it should be pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna show you guys what kind of parts we have and uh, what we're gonna be doing. All right, so to start, I got a set of new tires. These ones are 25560 R15s. These are Hankook tires, Kinergy ST. And then a matching set for the front, which are a little bit thinner. I think those are 225-70-15s. Some new meat for the wheels. And then in that box there, that is a Ford F100 rear tank conversion. This particular truck has the tank behind the driver's seat. And that's a hornet's nest, so. <laughs> Oh man, so we're gonna have to deal with that as well. But anyway, so the gas tank is behind the driver's seat on this guy. So I'd like to just swap that out, get it to the rear of the truck, and then we'll work on the engine. I'm sure the carburetor is gonna need some work, all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and get right to it. I'm gonna take these wheels off and get them sent off to the tire shop while I work on this. sit so low it's kind of sunk into the dirt so I had to you know carry that heavy jack around and lift up all the points but we got it done the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go take those to the tire shop because it's already it's already 1 45 in the afternoon so I got to get those done so I can get them back by the end of the day and then uh, I'm gonna run to the store and grab some raid because as you can see maybe you can see this guy there is a bunch of wasps in there and I don't mess with wasps so I'm gonna head to the store, go get a couple more things, and then I'll be on my way. All right, so I just got back from the tire store. I also went to Walmart and got some wasp spray. It's pretty late in the afternoon now. The old spaghetti hauler here. It's been having some vapor locking issues. I thought putting a new aluminum intake on it would help out a little bit, but it doesn't seem to have done anything, so but uh, basically a vapor locked on me at the gas station. Had to wait for like 20 minutes. So that kind of put me behind on time. Right there, you can see the new tires. Uh, they look good. So I'm gonna slap those on and drop the truck back on the ground just so it's, you know, not sitting on sketchy wood blocks or anything. And then uh, I think it's time to kill some wasps. All right, and uh, literally two minutes later, here comes the rain. So I'm gonna try to rush and put these tires on and then uh, hopefully it doesn't come down too hard. Never mind, it's coming down hard. I'm not getting a break today, boys. I'll tell you that much. Thankfully, pretty sure I have a sweater back here. So I'll throw this on and just have to brave the rain. It's a lot colder up here than it's been normally, so it's kind of nice. Job still gotta get done, so no stopping. God, this sweater is small. Um, okay, it's like a child sweater. That's fine. All right, well, I'm not gonna bring my camera outside and my GoPro is just sitting here formatting for some reason. So I'm just gonna slap the tires on and I'll be right back. All right, finally stopped raining. So let's uh, get back to work here. Oof. 
All right, so she's got her new wheels on there. Of course, I forgot to put the hubcaps on all of the uh, wheels except for that one, or no, not even that one, the other side. But it's looking a lot better already. I'm a little bit out of breath. It's like humid out here now after the rain. I think now it's time for the part that I've been kind of dreading, which is opening this thing up and uh, spraying some wasps with some wasp spray. All right, so today's flavor is uh, Eliminator Wasp and Hornet Killer. My plan of attack is I'm gonna open this passenger side because I believe the wasp nest is inside the door on the other driver's side. Luckily, um, I think they go dormant a little bit when it rains. So uh, I'm really hoping I could just get in here, spray a few of them, close the door, and then repeat. I hope I don't get stung. Got the door propped open. I see one on the window over there, but I believe the nest is actually inside the door jam. You guys see him there? He's right there. That little beck right there on the window. I don't, I don't like wasps. Okay, got him. Looks like he's dying. Okay, so far so good. Gotta see where some other ones could be. That one looks like he's dying a slow painful death. I think it's time to open the other door unfortunately. All right, here's the real scary part. I'm gonna try to open this door here. Uh, God, I'm scared. I see one little nest down here. Spray that guy. There's the big nest right there. I see it in the door jam. I'm just gonna let her eat. All right, so far so good. I haven't seen any more. All right, well, let's go pop the hood while the, that stuff cooks. Okay, I just found the mother load. I was thinking that it was in there. No, it's it's right there. So I'm gonna give that one a good rinse off. All right, I'm almost out of juice, so I hope to God I don't see any more. All right, time to pop this hood open. Hope I don't see any more wasps. Jesus, this thing's really heavy. Why is it so heavy? Looks like it's unlatched. Ugh, touch something, gross. Ugh, Jesus. There we go. Oh, just found another wasp nest. All right, so this is what we're dealing with here. I believe it's a small block four 302. Looks like it has an Edelbrock carb. Unfortunately, the air cleaner has been off. So chances are there's gonna be either nests or just a whole bunch of dirt in there. I don't have an air hose to spray that out. I do have carb cleaner, just starting fluid. My plan here is I went to O'Reilly's and I picked up an Edelbrock fuel pump and about six feet of hose. And I have a gas can in the back of the truck. What I'm thinking is rigging up a system to basically be my gas tank for now because I don't wanna use the old gas tank because I know it's already clogged up, filled up with gunk. So if I can just get a hose from the carb to the gas tank and just mount it somewhere, probably right here, uh, then I think we'll probably be able to start this. I have a battery on the charger right now, so we should be able to use that as well. But other than that, I think everything else should be pretty straightforward. I have no idea if the truck will go in forward or reverse. So that's another thing. I don't even know if it's in park right now. So that's a, another factor to consider is uh, I gotta get in there and check that. I'm just kind of waiting for any wasps to come out. Let's go ahead and try to rig up this fuel system. Yeah, yeah. One nest down. Okay, those ones are good. And we're gonna give this a check. It feels like it's in park. Yeah. So I believe the truck's in park, which is good. Chances are this carburetor is gonna end up getting rebuilt anyway, or a new one's gonna be put on. So I'm just gonna clean all this dust off as best as I can so we don't suck it up. Okay, that's looking better. I believe my plan of attack here is gonna be this red fuel hose disconnected from the fuel pump. I'm gonna just disconnect the fuel pump hose so it's not pumping anything because I don't know if there's fuel or not in there. Either way, it's gonna be varnish. Disconnect this red hose and then I'll route that to my fuel pump. I'll get my gas can set up probably here and that should be good enough to pump into the carburetor. Looks like there's a fuel filter on there too so that's gonna kind of save me a little bit of gunk. All right, so I, I just bought this new gas can and it looks like the gas can has some new kind of strainer built in. I don't know why. I'm sure it has to do with, you know, probably some dumb EPA stuff, which speaking of the EPA, if you guys haven't yet, please go sign the RPM Act. A lot of major channels, you know, PFI speed, 
speed, the JH diesel, a lot of the, the bigger YouTubers, the ones with shops, they're, they're just getting harassed and you know, the EPA is really coming after them. It affects the automotive industry altogether. So if you're like me and you want to continue working on cars and building them, performance vehicles and whatnot, yeah, just, just go sign the RPM Act. That's, that's basically all I have to say on that subject. But thanks to the EPA, I'm assuming, I'm gonna have to figure out some way to either get rid of this strainer or just drill right through it so I can get a hose down into the tank. Cause uh, right now I can probably only suck up like half a gallon of fuel. All right, so I just took a screwdriver and a pair of pliers and just uh, pried this thing out in Mexico, of course, which is where I am, Mexico, where the EPA does not regulate me. Here's the fuel pump. But basically, this is going to go here, and I have some hose clamps, and then the other end's gonna go to that, and then this end will go to the battery, and should be pretty straightforward. So let me get this all in here. All right, so I brought a battery that I know is probably not perfect. This one is from 2009, this one is from 2019, so you know, I'm really, playing the odds here. I bought some new battery cables as well. Luckily on the Ford, it looks like the starter relay thing is right there. And so I'll just disconnect this one. And uh, this one's a side post, so I'll change over the battery cables to side post. Let's go ahead and get that done. Well, the battery cables I bought are just 1700 feet too long, but that's, that's okay. We'll just make it work. We got our battery situation good. That's good right there, I think. I think I'm just gonna go hit the key, see if this battery's dead or not. Well, I bumped the key in it and it did something. So I'm gonna go bump it for two, three seconds just to make sure that the engine's free. It sounds like it is, but you never know. All right, yeah, engine's definitely free. Next thing to check is uh, probably gonna be spark. I mean, shit, I might just hook up this gas tank and see what it does. All right, I just unhooked this hose and there is just the thickest brown varnish that just came out of that. So chances are that fuel filter is probably clogged. Our best case scenario is that the fuel filter stopped all that from going into the carb. If not, the carburetor is gonna be all gunked up. So if this, if this Edelbrock runs, you know, at all, I'm gonna be very surprised. So I think the plan is gonna be instead of, you know, using this hose at all, cause it's gonna be full of varnish on the inside. I'm just gonna take it off from the carburetor and then just run my new hose to the straight into the carburetor. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this hose off completely. I can see the fuel filter and it looks brown inside. So it's probably no good. Now the real question is, will this really, really, really dull knife cut this fuel hose? And that way we'll find out. Doesn't seem like it is. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're not doing anything. All right, I found this little pair of wire cutters. Let's see if I can chomp through this stuff. Wow, there we go. Okay, that's good enough for the girls I date. So that's gonna go in there. All right, so I got my fuel line going from my tank to my carburetor. Got my fuel pump in line. Um, I'm just gonna throw some alligator clips from this to the battery, and then we'll just give it a crank, see if the car fills up, see if we see any gas in there, and then uh, we'll try to fire it. So I got my fuel pump just crudely wired with some alligator clips. It's not on the positive terminal, but it's right next to it. And then I have the ground just connected right now, same way. And so if I go ahead and test it out, you'll hear it. So what I think I'm gonna do is just make sure that it's getting fuel first of all. So I'll run it for a second, double check the carburetor, see if it sprays at all, and then we'll just send it. Feels like it's pumping. I just saw now though that the carburetor doesn't seem to function properly. It seems like it's a little seized up. So I'm gonna work on freeing that up. All right, so I have the carburetor kind of better. I don't think the little butterflies are actually opening on it, but the accelerator pump's pumping. I don't see any fuel in there yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a crank for a second, turn the fuel pump on, just see what happens. Let's see if we even have spark. Let's see if it pops off at all. Yeah, there's really nothing left to do. One thing I did off camera was I just disconnected the line that goes to the fuel pump just so it's not sucking any of that gas and pouring it all over the floor. So let's just, let's just see what happens, guys. I'll give it a little spray of starting fluid just to see. 
and we'll connect our fuel pump. We lost our starter signal. It's probably this loose connection right here. I'm gonna try without the fuel pump just to see what happens. I'm gonna assume that it's a battery. I might just get some jumper cables and connect it to my truck real quick. Okay, let's see if that does anything for us. I got the battery charger on like, I don't know, 70 feet worth of extension cord. And the battery charger saying that she's real dead. So I'm gonna let it charge for a little bit. On top of that, I have the little engine start feature on there. We'll see if that's enough to crank this engine. It, it seems like it spins really freely. So I don't think it's gonna take much charge to actually get this engine turning over. Yeah, so we'll just let that battery charge, you know, come back in 10, 15 minutes and try it again. Sun's starting to set a little bit as you can see. We got probably three hours of sunlight left and then I just want to show you guys this. Take a look at those mountains there. Man that's that looks real nice. Anyway I'll come back when uh, this battery gets a little bit of juice in her. All right so it's been like 30 minutes and and we are still barely at like 50%. So worst case scenario is I'm just gonna grab the battery out of my truck, pop it in here. We'll see what this does right now. I just really wanna get this engine cranking, running. I have maybe like an hour, maybe less left of sunlight. My goal is hopefully I can get this thing fired. And then if I'm really lucky, maybe I can get it to drive over there into the driveway, maybe even into the garage so I can continue working on it a little bit. I'm only here for one night and I spent half my day out in town doing tire stuff and uh, buying parts. We're kind of coming down to the wire here. Uh, if I can get this thing started, running, driving, I'll get it over there into the driveway. If not, then uh, I'll probably have to come back another time and get it going. Let's just uh, see what it'll do. All right, that's what I wanted to hear. Now I'm just gonna wire up my pump again, keep it going. Let's see if this will do anything. My suspicion is, is that this carburetor is gonna be just too messed up to run. I'm probably gonna have to pop that thing off and go through it just to free it up. It seems like it's kind of locked down. So pump's on, let's see what happens. Oh, all right, we got fuel coming out of the carb, but oh my God, did you guys hear that? God, that's that's crazy, it, it fired. Obviously the carburetor is just blocked up. I might be able to free it up a little bit or something. I think I overcame the float bowls with the pressure of the fuel pump. So I'm gonna give it a couple little taps here. See if I can free up anything. Seems like the linkages are just what's messed up. Yeah, I'm kind of excited now. Let's uh, let's try that again. Give it some squirts. Guys, no way. I didn't even have to try. That's pretty crazy. It's idling. I mean, it's idling rough, but it's idling. It's gonna run off of whatever's in the carb right now and probably die off. Or just keep going. Yeah, it's running pretty rough. I'm gonna turn it off just to, oh, okay. All right. So there is fluid coming out. I can't tell if it's that old gas or if it's oil. Let's see. It's gas. And it, it seems like it's the fresh gas. So the carburetor is just spitting everything it has back out. Geez, I, I wonder if I can just get the carburetor to work. If I could just get these linkages to work, we might be driving this thing. And if I put the fuel pump on, it just runs too much. It's just overflowing the carb. I'm gonna turn the fuel pump on and you guys will see what I'm talking about. So yeah, it's just overflowing the, the flow bowls. So yeah, it's, it's just pissing out all over the place. But man, I, I, I wish I had an Edelbrock carb with me. I think that's literally all it needs. It's just a carburetor because everything else seems to be working. I remember Pedro had mentioned something about the transmission linkage. I, I'm not familiar at all with Ford transmissions, but I'm assuming that it's some kind of kickdown cable or something. 
and this linkage just doesn't do anything i don't think i might just take the carburetor off work on it in the bed of my truck but i just have a feeling i'm gonna run out of daylight so let's see how long this thing runs for let's see if it'll move backwards if i could get it in reverse then you know we'll make a plan from there <laughs> It seems like when I press the gas, it actually does something. So, man, if I could just figure out the flow bowl situation, we'll just keep tapping on her. I'm gonna start it again and just get those floats to move. Yeah, it just really needs a new carburetor is all it needs. This is a 1408, which should be a 600 CFM, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, they sell them at the parts stores, but I'd hate to spend 300 some dollars on one. I might just check Facebook and see if there's anything around that I can grab, or I'm probably taking this thing off by the end of the night. Screw it, let's try it again. So right now it's just running out of gas. There's just not enough fuel in the flow bowls. So run this till it overflows. Uh, it looks like, no, okay. I was gonna say it looks like one side might've have, might have fixed itself, but no, it's still just overflowing. Oh man, it's just, I'm running out of daylight. So I guess I can pop this carburetor off and just take it apart the best I can without ruining all the gaskets. Chances are they're gonna be gone anyway and just seeing if I can get those floats. What's happening is the the seats on the floats, they're probably just stuck. So it's, it's overflowing the carburetor. I can try. Just try to hit here by the floats. See if those needles will just seat, you know? That's all I need is the needles to seat and it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's just overflowing there's raw fuel everywhere okay i think we're taking this thing apart that seems like our safest option right now it seems like all the throttle blades are, are locked together too i mean we heard it run if we can just get this carb to work i think we'll be okay okay let's do this let's see how fast we can pull this thing it's crunch time now baby we gotta hustle Should be free to take the carburetor off now. Still hooked up to my fuel line, but that's okay. Here, at least we can get a closer look at what's going on. We're on the tailgate of my truck, and I don't mean I don't know how well you guys will see this. Oh, that's gas, and it just got all over me. If we can look in there, you can see everything is seized up, and I think it might actually even be bent. The throttle plates might be bent. So chances of this thing working are getting slimmer by the second here. But let's see, so if I actuate this, looks like the uh, primaries work, but the secondaries are frozen up. Uh, let's see, what can we do here? I'm very doubtful I even have that Torx bit that's needed to open up the top of the carb. All right, well, either way, we're gonna have to try to get into the top of that. Let me see what I got. All right, this isn't something I recommend, but I believe what I need is a TX25. And I'm gonna try to find a flathead that fits tightly in there let's see okay i think the first one is better choice and we'll just see if we can if i mess this up i'm, I'm ruining these screws but it's working that's all we need right there baby oh, come on yes 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 got the evening sun on my back right now you know what that means it means it's gonna get dark pretty soon actually really impressed how easily those came out considering this whole carb is kind of seized up if we could get this top end off see what's going on with those floats maybe those get those jets reseated or not the jets the uh, needles reseated just see what's going on in here chances are it's just gunked up and i got a little bit of uh starting fluid in 
maybe it just needs to be washed off. Chances are this gasket is gonna get ruined, but those are cheap. The whole rebuild kit for its carbs only about 30 bucks. I just hate rebuilding these little rocks. I don't know why, I just have the worst luck with them. Poor little Ford just wants to run, man. It showed no hesitation, it just wanted to run. If we could just get this carburetor figured out, I bet you we'll be able to drive it. If I could just get it in the driveway even, I'd have some porch light to work under. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a bunch of taps all over try to pop it off the gasket instead of just rip the gasket off with it there we go managed to save the gasket so i know this guy needs to come off i'm probably gonna lose this clip i hate these things okay it's off i'm putting it right there you guys are seeing it actually i'm gonna put it right there in the between the three bolts and let's see what happens i'll probably lose it anyway now i screwed myself because i can't get this thing out okay all right these things are just gunked up sorry i forget all the carburetor terminology i don't mess with carb normally these floats look like they're set properly so pretty sure it's just gonna be the little so how to fix this so what's going on is this little, um, God, I, I suck at carburetors. The little needle valve right there, that guy, and it's not gonna focus either. But basically, that little needle valve right there, when you flip the float over, it should be coming down with the float, but it's not, because it's gunked up. So I'm just gonna try to take it out, clean it off, and see if it'll move freely. And I'm gonna do that off camera so I can get all my stuff together and then we'll come back. Carburetor update. Metering rod is um, stuck in the down position on this side and I'm, I'm just trying to tap it free but it doesn't seem like it's wanting to go. This side is, um, as you can see, this side is free to move. This side not doing anything. Oh, there it goes. Okay, just popped it free. I'm going to clean out the inside of the bore. It's just gunked up like everything else is. Take the spring out without losing it. Oh, and I just dropped it. God damn it. Okay, don't move, don't move, don't move. Okay, I had dropped the meter and rod spring and I thought it was game over. Uh, but I had big brain idea, got this magnet tray, and I, I literally just wiped everywhere on the floor that it could possibly could have been. And I, I managed to get it, boys. So I'm going to put this back together now. Those should be moving freely now. Yeah, let's just try to get this thing slapped together. I'll get back to you guys. Getting pretty dark out here, but I think we have something here. So these are our little needle seats. Flip them over. Remember before they weren't coming down? They're coming down now, except for that one on the backside. But actually, yeah, that one's down too. So I think we're good. I think that should stop the flow bowls from overfilling. So I'm gonna get this thing back together, throw it back on the truck, and we'll try to start it one more time. All right, boys and girls, it's gone pretty dark. I'm using the camera light now, as you can see. But we got the carburetor back on there. We got everything hooked back up. Now here's the moment of truth. Are the flow bowls gonna hold up? I have a little bit of faith, so only one way to find out though. So I'm gonna connect the fuel pump and see what happens. Okay. It looks like it's holding up. There's no fuel spewing all over the place. So, I think I'm gonna fire it with whatever it's got in there. Let's see if the, the bowls are filled yet. They should be about filled. I'm gonna see if it fires. I'm gonna come back out, out here before the bowls get empty and then I'm gonna connect the fuel pump and then we'll see how long it runs for. Looks like the linkages are kind of binding up here. Okay, I think I think the problem is just this guy. I think it was higher up on the accelerator pump. Okay, oh my God, and that's a, an actual Christmas miracle that I didn't lose that thing. Yeah, there we go, that, that seems like a better action. And I got the clip back on without dropping it, holy crap. I'm gonna say that's a win in itself. Anyway, let's try again. Fuel pump needs a little bit more, I think. You know what, I'm gonna leave it connected, see what happens. As long as I don't start overflowing and spilling fuel everywhere. Oh, there's no return spring. Okay, now, there we go. Okay, that feels a lot better. Let's see if it actually is a lot better.
All right, we're just not getting fuel to the carburetor, I don't think. I can feel pressure in the hose, but we're just not getting any fuel in there. Or at least it doesn't feel like it. it doesn't sound like it. It could be the accelerator pump or the float bowls are just already closed off. So we'll, we'll try tapping on it again. And we're just not getting anything. I'm not sure what it could be. I mean, it could be flooding now at this point. I'm just, I just don't know. Hey, how's it going? It's uh, me from the future. When I uh, recorded this, I recorded this almost a year ago. It's probably been eight months since I recorded that. Unfortunately, I didn't get any footage after that. It was already about eight o'clock, nine o'clock. It was pretty much pitch black outside. I basically only had enough time to wrap up my tools and get out of there. We actually did end up going back to the truck maybe six, seven months later, a couple months ago from now. And um, we actually did get it started. It turned out to just be that carburetor was junk. I had a used carburetor that I had kind of laying around. I brought it over there, hooked it up with just a gas can and it ran. We got it moving. You know, all that only took about 30 minutes so I didn't really have time to film. But here's some footage of the truck moving. So just a quick little update. We got this thing finally running. Took a new carburetor, cleaning out the fuel lines and stuff. We got it in his garage and we're gonna be dropping in this under the bed fuel tank kit so that we can get the gas tank out from behind the back seat there. So that'll be nice, nice little kit here. It's supposed to be all bolted in so this should all go pretty smoothly and then we'll uh, get this thing on the road. I still want to go back and get the actual fuel tank mounted up in the bed and all that stuff. Hopefully get that truck actually driving again. So expect another video on it sometime whenever I get a chance. Yeah, this is just some old footage and I thought it was pretty cool and I figured I shouldn't let it sit anymore any longer and let you guys see something different from me. But anyway, this is actually my Twitch setup so I'm sure you guys aren't used to seeing me in this kind of uh arrangement uh, anyways if you guys want to you can check me out on twitch i'll leave the links down in the description right here as always if you guys have any questions you can hit me up on instagram instagram.com at giovanni dante facebook facebook.com slash giovanni dante grego and yeah that's about it you know just a different video and i hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one